so you guys just saw Jorge Soler hit an absolute moonshot, and I have some exciting news. In the mail this morning, I received his bat from Game 6 of the 2021 World Series. This bad boy right here. Let me just say, if you're young enough to not know what the Triton is, just be thankful because this was the greatest bat ever made. Also, before we get into the highlights, can I just throw up this picture right here? The baseball reference page for Freddie Freeman. The fact that it says World Series. Oh, I'm so happy. What's going on everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. The final recap of the 2021 MLB season. I am so excited that we've made it all the way until the off season and don't go anywhere. We're going to be making baseball videos every single day going forward. So just a reminder, don't go anywhere. This is still more than an MLB recap channel. And also make sure you guys watch until the end of today's video because we are going to talk a little bit about the 2022 season. Carlos Correa, his time in Houston is done. We have some concerns about the collective bargaining agreement there's a lot to bring up all right let's go ahead and recap game six of the 2021 world series the braves put a beating on the houston astros and max freed he was living at the bottom of the zone and i will say he was getting a few generous calls but the umpire he was bad consistently throughout the game both against houston and for houston and also i'm wearing my picasso shirt because max freed was painting like picasso yesterday jorge soler as you guys saw i do have his bat right here. Mr. Soler hit a ball to Pluto, and honestly, he had flashbacks of Albert Pools versus Brad Lidge back in the day. I'm gonna go ahead and roll that clip right now. Who do you think had the more prodigious or the more impressive home run? Albert Pools versus Brad Lidge or Mr. Jorge Soler? I mean, that ball was pooted on. Dansby Swanson clutches up later on in the game and connects for a two-run no-doubter in the fifth inning, and then Frederick, Mr. Freddie Freeman, has an RBI double after the Swanson home run, and then a pimp job in the seventh to put icing on the cake. This was all in between Max Freed becoming the first player in a World Series clinching game to toss six shutout innings without allowing a single walk. I mean, the dude was on top of his game yesterday. Now, speaking of being on top of their games, Tyler Matzik, he tossed two more shutout innings with four strikeouts, and Will Smith, he completed a perfect postseason run. He pitched 11 innings. He did not allow a single earned run after being one of the most hit or miss pitchers over the course of the regular season and Braves fans pretty much sitting on the edge of their chairs every time he came in to pitch because he was prone to imploding. But Jorge Soler, he ends up being the World Series MVP with three home runs and six RBIs as a magical season comes to an end. We're going to go ahead and end the highlights with a few interviews from Freddie Freeman with Ken Rosenthal as well as after the game with Big Poppy because they're just fun and I love seeing Freddie Freeman being happy. He's one of the best guys in baseball. I don't know, Ken, I'm at loss for words. This is, this is it. This is everything you work for. And I mean, we're in November right now and we've been doing this since February and we've had so many ups and downs this year. I think a home run in a World Series is pretty cool. So uh, I saw all my teammates outside that. I saw my family just jumping up and down. So some emotion came out in that moment. It's absolutely amazing that we get to call him a world champion now for everything he's done for this organization, for all the people he coached in the minor leagues to build up in this organization, and now he's a world champion, manager of the year, everything. He has every single award that you can get as a manager, and that is just the coolest thing. I baptize him. Pay the man! Pay the man! Pay the man! I'm trying to pay the man! Don't go to the supermarket with the money. I like that. I like there that. There you go. Congratulations, Freddie. Freddie. Well deserved. Congrats, Freddie. Thank awesome. Very much. Take care, Freddie. Now, a few takeaways from that series. We have a missing persons report out for a guy named Jordan Alvarez. This is what he looks like. Uh, he went two for 20 in the World Series and went missing. So if you guys see him, make sure that you guys call the police because, again, he has a family that dearly misses him. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but God, Jordan, I'm, I guess I guess he used up all of his magic in the ALCS because, yeah, he was not good. But honestly, neither were the Astros in general. They had a 550 OPS in the World Series. They had two home runs combined in those six games and both of them were by Jose Altuve. Correa could not get the job done but he is done in Houston. That was his final game as a member of the Astros. He has acknowledged since the beginning of the season that this is his final year because Houston is not willing to match his price. Framber Valdez, he allowed 12 base hits, four home runs and 10 earned runs in four and two-thirds inning pitched. We 
have Luis Garcia allowing 14 earned runs in 15 innings this postseason. Lance McCullers going down with an injury really hurt them, but the Braves, they lost Mike Soroka, Ronald Acuna Jr., Charlie Morton. We don't have excuses anymore. The Braves overcame all of them. The Braves bullpen was insane. They are called the night shift. And look at these guys right here. Tyler Matzik. You have Luke Jackson, who was really good aside from the Dodger series. Um, I mean, AJ Minter. Yeah, he had a three ERA, but he was really good for the majority of the season. And Will Smith not allowing a single earned run. And the Braves, they can do this for the next few years. Freddie Freeman, he is going to get paid a lot. And that's possible because Ronald Acuna Jr. and Ozzy Albies, they both are being paid pennies on on the dollar for what they're worth. I'm not sure if they did that intentionally, but for their value, yeah, they're severely underpaid and the Braves, they can become better because of that. And also, I just wanna show the prophecy, or do I say uh, sorcery, because Trevor Pluth might be a witch and he has to be stopped because he predicted way back early on in the season that the Braves were going to beat the Astros in six games. That's exactly what happened. And also, I heard something that if he would've put $1,000 on his own bet, he would have made about $26 million. So hopefully he actually bet on that and just and didn't just tweet it. But I just want to say I could not be happier for the city of Atlanta after what happened in the Super Bowl against Tom Brady a few years ago with the Falcons and what happened last year against the Dodgers where you guys joined me, a fellow Cleveland fan, a member of the Blowing a 3-1 Lead Club, which is nice because I don't feel as lonely anymore, but still, I am so happy that Atlanta gets to have this year all to themselves, a legitimate non-Mickey Mouse World Series. It's theirs to enjoy, and I'm super happy for them. Look at this graph. This shows the chances of Atlanta winning a World Series throughout the year. It was hovering below 10% for the majority of the season and they come back and they give Freddie Freeman his victory a year after Clayton Kershaw gets his W. So who is next in terms of the superstar faces of baseball? Is Mike Trout next? Nolan Arnato, Bryce Harper? Honestly, I'm hoping it's Bryce Harper because he's going to be a two-time MVP. He plays as hard as anyone. Please, Bryce Harper, give him a chip. So that does it for the 2021 MLB season. There will be a video, possibly two coming out in the next week or two, recapping the best moments from the regular season as well as the postseason. Or if you guys just want it in one big video, I can do that as well. But now I wanna go ahead and real quick dive into 2022 because the Universal DH, it is most likely coming back and that has to be settled upon in a CBA. The CBA, it ends on December 1st and if that does not get agreed upon in the next few weeks, there will be a lockout in the 2022 season, which means it might get delayed. We might not have a season. And this dates back to the 2020 quarantine season when things got spicy between players and owners. But I'm hoping that they can build off the success that they came out with a few weeks ago where Major League Baseball came out and said that they were going to be providing housing to minor league players. That was a big time win. I'm hoping they can build off of that. Players and owners can come together and we can have a fantastic 2022 campaign and build off of the viewership increase and the rating success. I mean, I know the ratings weren't all time great or anything like that, but again, we're creeping up on the NBA. The NFL is light years away, so we're not gonna talk about that, but I'm proud of what baseball did this year and hopefully this CBA can get agreed upon soon and we can we can just play baseball. Well, everyone, that does it. Thank you all so much for your support over the 2021 campaign. We only missed, I think, one or two recaps. I think dating back to when we first started doing this, three or four recaps ever since we started doing this whole thing over the last few years. So if you wanna talk baseball or keep up to date, this is the best place to be. And also, we're gonna be making videos until spring training. Don't go anywhere. It's about to get even more interesting. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe out there. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.